How's everyone doing? Oh, you're alright. Cold there, back again, dropping yet another video. For those that subscribe to me, you know who I am, you know what I do. For those that don't know who I am and don't subscribe to me, <clears throat> my name's Cody Lachey, I'm a reformed criminal. I've just recently got out of prison after another stretch. Um, I've been involved in the criminal underworld, uh, gangland, gangs, gangsters, um, been in prison, <clears throat> been in trouble for assault on police, firearms, um, violence, assault, everything uh, in between. <clears throat> right, I'm doing today's video on um, a prison officer called Ryan Goodenough is currently fighting for his life, as you'll see from the beginning of the video, uh, the headlines and stuff. Um, yeah, Ryan Goodenough is 21, is a prison officer at um, Oak Hill, which is, it's a detention centre for YOI, so it's a young offenders institute in layman's terms. <clears throat> um, he had to be airlifted to a hospital after being attacked by five prisoners. Even all the YOs, they're still prisoners, aren't they? They're still in detention. Uh, it's a secure, it's a training facility as well. They use it as a training facility. Right, it's been rated inadequate by Ofsted, right, which means there's serious lack across five out of six departments or something. There was one, there was, there was way, way short of uh, <clears throat> the, the set bar and principle within the, the within the Young Offenders Institute, right. Um, my first, firstly, before we get into it proper, I want to start off by saying my thoughts and my prayers. Um, are with Ryan Goodenough and his friends and his family at this sad time. Um, even though I'm anti the establishment and I'm fighting for prisoners' rights and stuff, uh, no one, and I mean no one, whether it's prisoner, prison officer, um, deserves to leave prison either on to end up on a life support machine or die. Is obviously his life's in the balance. Like I say, my, my thoughts and prayers are with him and his family at this sad, tragic time. <clears throat> uh, there's many reasons that, obviously, the, the fact that it's run by G4S means it's a private institute. Um, I don't think G4S are fit for purpose. Um, I think they're glorified security guards, to be honest. No offence to Ryan good enough, but like I say... Um, Short staffing numbers could be a reason down a reason that contributed to Ryan's good enough being attacked. Like I say, the fact they had to be airlifted to hospital tells you about the significant injuries that he's obviously suffered to be airlifted out of there um, to, to get him to hospital as quick as they can to try and like to, to save his life um, in in theory. So. Like I say, the fact what you got to ask yourself is how can five, like, 14 to 16-year-olds impact an officer's life so bad that they have to be airlifted to a hospital? Where was his backup? Um, like I say, I, I'm not I'm not pro-screws or anything. Like I, I'm pro-prisoners, to be honest. But the fact is, yeah, the prison officers do a very difficult job in very difficult circumstances with a very, very limited budget. Um... I'm of now where I used to, it was us versus them, yeah, attitude, yeah, cons versus screws. Now my attitude's changing to the point of where I think screws and cons need to stand together to highlight the problems. I think prison officers need to go on strike and I need the lads, I think the lads need to try and take over the prisons um, without committing criminal acts and stuff. But in protest... Get on the roof and get the get the word out and stuff because, like I say, too many. The fact is, the prison officers and the prisoners are fighting each other. When in theory and in practical like terms, they're both angry at the same system, right? The prisoners are mad at the like the Ministry of Justice. <clears throat> they're not. They don't see the Ministry of Justice. They they just see pure bang up, right? They see. Prisoners being spoke to like shit because, like I say, the stat the, the the screws yeah they're understaffed. They've got low morale. They're massively overstretched and they're massively massively overworked. And a simple fact is, there's there's not enough numbers of them. Three of three officers yeah to 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 contain like six days seventy eighty inmates on a wing. It, it's nowhere near fully operational capacity, is it really? Um, so obviously officers are stressed out. They then might speak to lads in, to, in turn in shit. If they if the lads are disrespectful to them, the the, the teenagers aren't they? So they're going to have that chip on the shoulder. Yeah, they're in prison. They've got something to prove. Um, I've come across YOs, yeah, YO because there's so many young offenders within the prison system. They're actually 
like overflowing now from young offenders institutes which are full of just young offenders into male adult prisons and stuff <clears throat> um, and they do bounce about where they think they know it all they've got a bit of a chip on their shoulder um, in my eyes the, these are the when the in the prison system at this young age this is where we need to mold them right we need to give them the training and the qualification so when they get out of prison because they're not yet I, I call it like soft clay they're not yet fully like they're still changeable they can still change right so they're the ones that need to, the, the, the government should be throwing like uh, resources at these people and courses and stuff obviously it doesn't happen and everything else like i say uh, going back to to ryan good enough yeah uh, god bless him my thoughts are with him and his friends and his family um there's two screws in prison right you've got the screws that just go to work they speak to the lads as decent human beings and they don't go hands-on unless they have to and then they go home because it's just a job to them then you've got other people that take the job and think they swap the personality for a set of keys and they become arrogant the because they might go to the gym and stuff and they might be like oh like bit of a me edge yeah when a lad speaks to them with disrespect the screws attitude might be to go at them now like i say these yo's they're a wily little bunch and they feel like they've got something to prove and the fact that four or five of them have got together right i've been in prison yeah i've never seen an incident where it's like two or three on one it's normal in male prisons yeah it's just a one-on-one -on -one situation really and if a, a prisoner's got a problem with a screw that one prisoner will go after that one screw but the fact that this lad has got like his boys together or something could be part of a gang or something i'm not you, you can only speculate can't you but the fact that four or five of them have gone at this screw to attack him to within an inch of his life um <clears throat> there's two reasons right the screw could he could be a bully where the lads have gone at him right i'm only giving scenarios yeah you understand right it could have been he could have put his hands on one of the lads and twisted one of them up uh, or a couple of them and then they've all remembered they've all got together and thought we're going to target him that's one reason they could have attacked him secondly is just the lads were having a bad day uh the, the screws said something to him or something and they've isolated he's been obviously he's been isolated and the fact they've attacked him um it might be a decent screw that just goes to work sees it as a job and then wants to go home safe and sound to his friends and family unfortunately on this occasion it's obviously not happened um like i say i don't want to see anyone leave prison in a body bag or on a on a live leaving hospital in an air ambulance or an ambulance to have to go to a hospital and be put on a life support machine i, I don't think it's the way forward like i say um, prisoners and prison officers um are fighting each other like it's violence is happening from screws to prisoners prisoners to screws prisoner to prisoner and then it's just a vicious vi fucking cycle the prison system's a powder keg right and like i say with less and less prison officers more volatile violent dangerous inmates and stuff with more to prove um with with prisoners going to prison with mental health issues um developing mental health issues while they're in prison because of isolation and long hours like confined behind the door and stuff um the spice recreational drugs um alcohol weapons mobile phones um the prison system to be honest is a joke right but you know what it's prisoners that are suffering and also i have to add i had this right for the first time prison officers they're there if you look at prison officers right really like there are right, i've just got out of a cap i don't like hmp staff right i do not like hmp staff right obviously i was in a sedexo run prison the last time uh, but i have been in hmp prisons and hmp prison officers they don't have sense of humor they don't have interactions with you um they swap the personality for a set of keys and and the, the ruthless little bullying bastards right then you've got the screws that were at sodexo right that were decent they spoke to you as human beings um they agreed with me with a lot of issues on prison issues and prison reforms and everything right and like i say they're complaining to us as prisoners that there's not enough staff people are kicking off with them look I, I, I'm late for my visit. Um, fuck, I'm, I'm still a lot behind my door. I'm still a lot behind my door. And it all comes down to prison shortages. And it's not the screws' fault. The screws would like to have enough screws so the lads can be out and have social and exercise and everything else. But like I say, it's the government and the Ministry of Justice, right? They're penny pinching and they're putting officers' risks at lives. And they're also putting prisoners' off, uh, risks at life. Because if this attack happened on a prisoner, the prisoner would be on his way to the hospital and be on a life support machine. But sadly, it, 
obviously that's not the, the situation. It's a prison officer that finds himself fighting for his life. And like I say, he was only doing his job. Like I say, I'm not, I am so anti-establishment and so fucking, so for prisoners that this is out of turn for me. But like I say, I'm a convict first, right? I'm a fucking, I'm a criminal first, but I'm also a human being, right? And like I say, there's a lot of decent screws within the prison system, right? There are scumbags and there are bullies, right, who I can't stand, right? But there are a lot of decent screws within prisons and stuff. The fact that this lad's 21, right, they are personally, right, no disrespect to him, I'm not trying to undermine him, but at 21, you, you're only if, like a couple of years older than these lads, right? Um, I think that the, the training as well for these fucking, for, for screws and stuff is like nine weeks. Where in Norway, right, where they've got lower fucking reoffending and lower prisoner numbers massively, is the prison, the prison staff there, the screws, their training is like two years. Nine weeks. Fuck me. Sentences are not a fucking, uh, are longer than that, do you know what I mean? So like I say, the, the, the training that needs to go into it, is unbelievable but like i say coming back to ryan uh, good enough god bless him uh, is the fact is he's if he dies right which obviously god forbid yeah my fucking my heart goes out to him touch wood yeah um but if he dies the the blood is on the hands of the ministry of justice because of penny pinching you can't put a price on an officer's life just like you can't put prices on prisoners lives but when you lock prisoners up for, for long amounts of time right when they're screaming out for help mental health uh, like they need mental health issues they've got mental health issues and the the angry and the pent up and the the full of testosterone right and they're locked behind the doors for long periods of times and the buzz is being ignored because they're on the buzzer every two minutes right the lads get pent up and angry they don't see the ministry of justice they see the uniform that's in front of them and that's what they attack and that's what they go after so you find prison officers clashing with prisoners prisoners attacking prison officers and vice versa and backwards and forwards and the circles keep spinning and spinning because they're both angry at the same system one that governs them i.e the prison officers and one that oppresses the fucking prisoners right so they're both angry at the same system the lads want to be out they want to be having soch right they want to be on exercise they want to be on association but because of the ministry of justice tying the hands of the prison like the prison service and the prison officers association low numbers low morale um they're both angry at the same system and, it, and you know what i've said it in look at my previous videos look at my previous videos i've said sooner or later someone's going to be maimed seriously injured or die whether that's a prison officer or a prisoner right the only reason i want more screws in prisons right is not to oppress the lads more is if you, there's more prison officers right and there's more money put into the prison system the lads might get out for more than an hour a day they might get qualifications, they might get gain employment within the prison, they might be put on worthwhile training courses and stuff so that they can rehabilitate themselves because at the end of the day, the only person that can change you and your behaviour is yourself. And there's a lot of good lads in prison that want to be reformed and want to change their lives and stuff, but like I say, the training's not there, the money's not there because of penny pitching by the government, but yet they send fucking millions and millions and millions of pounds of foreign aid to foreign countries. That are still living in mud huts and still drinking dirty water and still dying of fucking like diarrhea and fucking shit like that right british money for british people right put and that doesn't matter what your religion is what your nationality uh, what um race you are right there's only one year race yeah the human race right now we need to put that money into the prison system until and we need more prison officers we need better conditions for prisoners uh, we need to get into the 21st century prisoners should be have access to um things like skype they should be able to get incoming calls within prison because it's on the pin system so the calls are still recorded um i could sit here all day it, it angers me and frustrates me but like i say as a prisoner i find it strange that i'm speaking out sticking up for prison officers uh like i say they do a very difficult job with very difficult circumstances with very sudden violent explosive um like incidents and they do it with a very limited budget and you know what there's some decent screws not not the dickhead screws they deserve everything they get but decent screws that go to work right that just go to do a job right they actually feel sorry with the lads they have a good banter with the lads you have a laugh with the lads but pardon me and then they go home safe to the families right um and like i say there's too many prison officers and prisoners are both suffering 
prisons are overcrowded, it's costing the taxpayer money, and then the taxpayers see all these headlines of drugs, mobile phones, fucking like MMA fights in prison, uh, mixed martial arts fights, so like people kicking, fighting, squabbling, right? People taking bets in prison, people running drug empires from prison, spies, pissed up prisoners, videos coming out of prisons, prisoners taking over Birmingham prison, um, Swanley prison, uh, Swaleside, sorry, down in Kent, all these incidents and stuff, and the taxpayers are thinking, wow, well, this is supposed to be prison, right? Prisoners are running prisons, right? And like I say, I'm not trying to, I, I'm for prisoners always, right? The, I think we, the, the, this prison system's fucked, right? And being locked behind your door for 23 hours a day doesn't re, 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 reform anyone. Right? And if anything, in prison, you make criminal connections, you get out, and you consider, so it actually makes crime worse. It's like the naughty class at school. You're full of criminals, you learn criminal connections, and you can you, you end up with connections across the board in every sort of crime imaginable. Um, like I say, um, my th I'm going to leave it here, guys, right? I've waffled on for long enough. Um, my thoughts and prayers go out to Ryan Good enough, his friends and his family at this sad time. I hope to God you pull through, um, signed yours, uh, former prisoner. Take care, guys. God bless. Bye.